G'day there, Alan Johnson here from Piranha Off-Road Products with of course Mr Dennis Dwyer. Our discussion now is a little bit about batteries and specifically batteries. Now what's happened over the last few years is there is some new technologies become available which typically were not five or six years ago. So Dennis is our battery expert so I'd like to hand over to tell us a little bit about what's happening in batteries, specifically with the three major choices that the four-wheel driver has when they're looking at auxiliary batteries in their four-wheel drive. Terrific, thank you Alan. Well yes we do have more choice today than we've ever had before and now we're looking at batteries with not just a starting and deep cycling but now we've got different technologies to consider and we'll cover those one by one as we go through. But first of all let's just cover the traditional flooded lead acid battery that we've all been used to and we're currently using in our vehicles today. Here we have your traditional deep cycle battery, which is your reliable battery, good energy storage, robust design to give you that energy for running your refrigerators and other items and accessories. We then move across to the hybrid style. This has become a more popular style of recent times where you get the advantages of starting along with cycle duty. And this has become a very popular battery and is even used in a lot of commercial transport. Then of course your classic starting battery. Now this battery is clearly your starting battery, high energy performance and ideal for your winching as well as your starting. But let's consider that for a moment because a starting battery never will be a deep cycle battery. The technology won't allow it. It can't be cycled over and over and over again and the plates all stay in one piece and that's as simple as that. And that covers your basic two or three different types of batteries suitable for your four-wheel drive. You'll notice most of these are all in the 12-inch in the old money or 300 mil long case, which is a very, very popular battery shape and style for your four-wheel drive. And some of those drop down to the 265 mil, which is becoming popular in some of the imported vehicles. Now, back to Alan's point. Where are we going into the future? Well, the future has opened up a whole Pandora's box of batteries. We've got our spiral wound deep cycle, Alan, you know those ones so well. And these batteries are a unique style of technology. Not only do they combine the spiral wound benefits of strength and robustness and bringing in that very important feature, Alan, of anti-vibration. Absolutely, yes. Which, as you know, and you've just come back from Cape York, those corrugations can play hell with your batteries. And... This particular type of construction really keeps it firm and solid and longer lasting in that type of application. So you've got your spiral wound AGM, absorbed glass mat. Not rocket science, but really, really good technology that it gives you the advantages of very fast recharge and very fast discharge. Higher usable voltage and therefore your batteries aren't working as hard. We've also got in that particular technology, again, the AGM, absorbed glass mat. We now have the flat plate AGM, which is the flat plate version or conventional style shape, but using the latest technology of AGM. With that particular one, it's usually better used in the caravans, yes. camper vans, and also in the back of vehicles where we can't fit them up under the front. Like this thing here. Like that very one there. An ideal situation. And again, if you, you cape your trick, you notice with the camper trailers, they use batteries in their trailers quite significantly these Lots days. Lots of flat plate AGMs. Not unusual to see two batteries a trailer well, on? Exactly. Exactly right. And that flat plate AGM is totally sealed and very safe to use in an enclosed location. Unlike your normal conventional batteries, there's no free acid to spill out and cause corrosion and all the rest of it. issues. The other issue I wanted to touch on, Dennis, is when we're charging these batteries, there are different characteristics. Yeah. Some require higher voltage than others. Good so point. quite simply, not all these will match together. I'd like you to just touch on that if you can. Well, that's really a That's big... a can of worms. Yeah, that is a can of worms, one. Ellen. <laughs> but certainly I'd love to touch on that. In the traditional sense of parallel charging, and this is what I think you're referring to, yep. in parallel charging when we sometimes match up one or two batteries on the auxiliary, we would like to have them the same. Yes. They've got to be a similar capacity. We've got to have a similar technology. And this is not an old wives' tale. No, no. You know, we've all heard it and people, oh, that's all for the birds. That's a it is absolutely true. It will tank your batteries. You will not get a satisfactory charge and you will not get an optimum rate. Now, what we didn't mention with charge rates, Alan, was the flat plate AGMs and the spiral wound AGMs. 
these batteries are sensitive to charge. Absolutely. And they do have to put out your 14.2 volts, 14.4 volts, yes. which, by the way, your modern motor car is more than capable of doing. Yes. Maybe not some of the older cars, and that should always be checked yes. before you fitted them as auxiliary batteries. Now, your lead-acid batteries, your flooded lead-acid batteries, they're probably a little bit more open to a wider charging regime and they'll charge between 13.8 and 14.4 volts. More tolerant. More tolerant, absolutely, that's a good word. Mm. So we have less tolerance in your later technology batteries, more tolerance in the older style. Now, now the last thing I wanted to just touch bases on yeah. is these calcium batteries down here, these new buys. The new entrance to the, the market? The new entrance into the market, yes. yes. A little bit of information, yes, because people do talk about them a lot and people pump them up as being the greatest and best thing, but not for older cars, and I think we should just explain why that is. That's a very good point, Alan. These are generally found into the car starting, automotive starting, and for that matter the four-wheel drive starting, of course, but the calcium battery or the calcium technology usually is a semi-sealed, they're not totally sealed, it's still flooded lead acid, and the calcium refers to the alloy we use in the metal of the plate. Yes. So the actual carrying of the sponge lead which makes up your active material. Now these batteries are less tolerant to undercharge. And I know that all sounds like gobbledygook, but the fact is it's got to be charged at a certain voltage. Yep. So and a lot of the older cars If we can't get that don't voltage do up that battery is not going to charge. And it will wind down and Correct. subsequently it will stop starting your car. So you can have a perfectly good battery in a perfectly good older car and it won't work. Correct. So there's nothing wrong with the battery and it's not a warranty issue. That's the important thing to discuss. It's nothing wrong with it. It's no. not a warranty. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with your car. No, there isn't. Incompatibility. <laughs> Incompatibility. This is what this is about. There are technologies that Absolutely. you as the consumer need to be aware to understand what's going on so you get the right thing for your job. Just like tyre technology's changed, so has battery technology. And I think pretty much into the future, Alan, we're going to see more advances. We and particularly as we launch into the electric car future, it is going to bring us more modern technologies, which we'll no doubt see in the normal combustion motor market as well. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Dennis. I hope this has been some help to you guys. If you need any further information, feel free to contact us or any of the major suppliers. We're there to help. Thank you.